Illinois got a 98 to 87 win over Nebraska in the Big Ten tournament. Let's take a look at some of the film on how they did it. Terrence Shannon went for 40 points, a Big Ten tournament record, and 22 of them came in the second half. So we're going to go through a few plays, how Terrence Shannon was able to get to this number. Nebraska's, or this right here, Illinois is going to start in a pick and roll against Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska oftentimes will either put the, the big on the ball or kind of play him more at the level like he does here, showing a lot of help, and Nebraska is going to try to force the ball handler always into the help. And then usually the low man, which in this case is Jawan Gary guarding Terrence Shannon. He's going to really rotate over, be at least at this midline, if not further over, which leaves Tomonaga here as kind of the other weak side defender having to guard two. And so as Domas drives, you're going to see, right, still two on the ball. Gary rotated to take Rodgers. Gary does a great job of kind of drifting to the top of the key. And Domas would probably have him as well. Um, but he decides to go to Shannon and not a good pass from Domas. And this is allows Tomonaga to actually close out a little bit, but it ended up just kind of being one of those days for Terrence Shannon where it didn't really matter if he was contested or not. He was just going to make them. Now, where Shannon absolutely thrives is getting downhill, getting to the rim. And so in this play, Hawkins is going to get it. Ball's going to kind of reverse, and you're going to see Shannon here in this corner. And so now as he catches, Hawkins is, is going to um, step up, try to set the screen. Nebraska generally tries to force kind of baseline. It's what they, they generally want to do know that that's where the help is. I don't know if Lawrence was expecting Williams to help here since Hawkins kind of was setting a screen, um, but he doesn't. And so now within just one one dribble right there, Shannon's able to kind of attack this inside foot from Lawrence, and now he's able to gain the advantage, get downhill. Alec does his job as, as the low man rotating over, being able to contest here. Um, but it's just where Taren Shannon is so good. It is He's just going to get downhill. He'll absorb any contact. I mean, you see it right here. That probably shouldn't like that shouldn't be able to go up, but Terrence Shannon is able to finish through the contact for the and one. So then on this one, Illinois is going to start in a pick and roll right here, and you're going to see kind of this late switch where Alec eventually switches out into to Hawkins. Gary with a 45 cut, bringing Tomonaga with him. So now this is going to flow um, kind of as, as a Hawkins drive here, right? And, and Hawkins is going to kind of fake like it's a handoff, decides to try to get downhill against Alec. And so as that happens, you're going to see Williams here really dig in, try to help in on this drive. That's going to leave Shannon open on this kickout. And now from here, Shannon's already hit a couple threes, so Williams is going to close out fairly hard. And this is where, again, Nebraska's going to try to force sideline, force baseline, and especially with Shannon, you want to take away his left hand. Shannon knows that's what's going to happen, though. And so he knows Williams right here is going to kind of be playing out this way. And so then he just attacks to get downhill. And again, Nebraska is loaded up. They have the defenders there ready, but just a great take from Shannon splitting the defense. If you're enjoying, please like and subscribe. In the first half, Nebraska scored 51 points while averaging 1.457 points per possession. And a lot of it came on the interior. So Nebraska is going to start in just normal stuff, kind of moving the ball back and forth. And then they'll flow into what is a potential handoff at the top of the key. You're going to see Terrence Shannon top lock Tomonaga, meaning he's just trying to force him to not really be able to go off of this pin down. So now Tomonaga can't do much in terms of getting the ball. But what he flows into immediately is setting a screen for Mast. And this is just something that I don't think, like usually when you're a guard like Shannon, and it's a little different with Illinois because they are a bigger team in general, but oftentimes guards just aren't used to having to be defend the screen. Usually they're the ones being screened, and so they know what to do from there. But this time, Shannon, Tom, Shannon has to guard Tomonaga, who's setting the screen. Going to be a little bit of confusion here. Hawkins goes under, and then Mash is going to get to his pull-up. This one's going to be a pretty simple play at the top of the key after just bringing the ball up. Mass is going to set a screen. Illinois is icing, right? And, and so um, Domas is going to jump out and force Williams to have to go this way. The only thing is, and we kind of recall that Mass has already hit a jumper or two, now as Williams drives, Hawkins, instead of trying to protect the rim, he's actually going to just kind of flare back out um, to Mast. And then Garrier, who is the low man, it would probably be tasked with rotating over, especially with Alec in the corner, who is not a shooter whatsoever. He's kind of caught like just reading this weak side. And so as that's happening, now he recognizes late, and there's just going to be nobody at the rim to help protect. Williams going to get all the way to there. A little bit later in the half, it's going to be a pretty similar play. So kind of a drag screen at the top of the key. This time, they do go off, right? And, and um, Jamarcus Lawrence here is going to use it, go down, get off, get downhill. Danger, again, it's going to, he's going to drop a little bit more. You're going to see here, right? He isn't like Hawkins stayed up with Mast. 
But as this drive happens, Danger never commits really to actually sliding over and getting in front. I don't know if he's maybe worried about trying to get back out to Mast, if there is that. Um, but with Rodgers never getting in front, Danger doesn't help at all again. It's just a free kind of run to the rim for Nebraska where they finish. Now, in the second half, though, Nebraska scored just 36 points and only averaged 0 0.947 points per possession. So about a point, uh, five points per possession differential, which is just a massive difference between halves. And so this one, kind of a scramble to start, is where we're picking this play up. Um, you're going to see Tominaga try to drive. Nothing happens. Hawkins gambles for the steal, and now that's going to leave Alec here, and he's going to have Williams on this kick out eventually. The only difference is, so now as Hawkins closes out, he's going to jump at the shooter, try to force Williams to put the ball on the ground, which is what happens. If we recall from, from the first half, there's just never help at the rim. This time, especially with Alec just and Gary both being down here, you're going to see a ton of help at the rim. Hawkins is going to actually be able to just swat this into like the eighth row. Um, just a lot more help at the rim from Illinois, and that was going to be a common theme. And so now in this play, Tominaga is going to refuse the screen off the just at the top of the key here. We saw this in the first half. Now this is also just really, really good one-on-one -on -one defense from Shannon. If we think back to earlier plays, these perimeter defenders were able to actually um, get by the Illinois defenders and get a step on them. But now with Shannon staying in front, he's going to you know force Tominaga, Tominaga to not have just a clear layup. And then you're also going to see Hawkins dive in and gamble kind of for a steal, also try to help protect at the rim. I, this would just seem like Illinois put more of an emphasis of trying to rotate and trying to get help wherever is needed. And this time it's going to be forced into just a really tough Tominaga shot there. Another thing that really helped Illinois was that in the first half, uh, they didn't shoot that great from three. In, in the game, they were 13 to 35, but in the second half, they were six for 11. Now, Illinois made more of an emphasis of actually getting downhill, especially Terrence Shannon in the second half. But then that also opens up some better looking threes. And so in this one, Nebraska, their defense, they're going to be in kind of a 2-3 zone. You're going to see Hawkins catch it here. And you can see right here, I, I think he's he's pointing kind of for Goody to fill this corner. Um, and so now as the ball swings, Illinois is going to slightly overload this side with Shannon having to be respected as already he's put up so many points. Um, you're going to see Lawrence right here. He just kind of gets just drawn in and really over helping um, way off in the corner. Mast isn't going to rotate out at all. This is just kind of a miscommunication. Like, like Lawrence either has to stay home a little bit um, or Mast has to be able to rotate out or Alec push him out a little bit, something like that. None of those happens. And so now look goody, probably the best three-point shooter on Illinois' team, gets a wide-open, in-rhythm look in the corner. A sideline out-of-bounds play here. Um, and, and Domas is going to get it here. You're going to see Hawkins kind of come over, set the screen. So this is an empty corner. So there's, there's nobody, no offensive player here. Um, and so... Again, Nebraska, they're going to ice, basically just force Domask into kind of the help here. You're going to see Gary, I mean, Gary's way peeled over. Tominaga's peeled down onto Rodgers, um, meaning that, and he, the skip pass happens. Tominaga just has to close out hard. But Hawkins, who's setting the screen on kind of for the ball handler to go this way, Nebraska forces this way, and Hawkins is just going to kind of slip out to the top of the key. And now with Mass having to pick up and guard the ball handler, it's either on Mass to have to close out or Williams to have to rotate um, to be able to get a contest. Neither of those happen in time, and Hawkins is going to drill a three. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and click here to see how Wisconsin beat Purdue.